Look, for now, apparently, get this, this is according to research for the Centre for Migration Control. Apparently, almost 400,000 legal migrants came to Britain since 2021 without criminal record checks. Look, let's just get straight into the nuts and bolts of this. What do you make to this? What's going on? This doesn't surprise me at all, because what happens now is the state and politicians, the government, they blame voters for misinformation or disinformation while concealing information and data from them. It's not only that we're not doing the criminal checks, it's that we're not collecting arrest rates and imprisonment rates by nationality and Why? immigration Why status. Not? Hang on, welfare credits, uh, sorry, welfare claims, tax credits, housing costs, accommodation costs, etc., etc. Government departments either have the data and they're not not revealing it or they're not collecting it in the first place at exactly the same time, Michelle, as other governments across Europe are collecting and releasing the data. Now, the question is why? Well, either it's incompetence or the state is deliberately concealing data from other people. And the criminality point, lastly, is really key. I'll give you one example today. This is insane. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. A guy came over to the UK from Iraq, a goat herder, an illiterate goat herder, OK? And he came over and he joined an organised crime gang and they sent him to Aberystwyth in Wales and he flooded Aberystwyth with his gang uh, full of cocaine and heroin. And he got the locals addicted to drugs and then they funnelled the money through fraudulent businesses on the high street. Car washes, you know, no doubt those little sweet shops and taxi companies. Now he's just been sent to prison, this Iraqi goat herder, for three years. Right mm -hmm. now, why is this guy even in the country to begin with? If you break our laws, you should be deported. But what struck me is, you know, that there's a lady today as well who's put into prison for two and a half years for writing some offensive things on Facebook. So why does this guy who comes over from Iraq, he gets just he gets six months more in prison. Why is he even in the country to begin with? This is lunacy. We need to leave the ECHR, control our borders and start treating British people with respect and decency, including giving them the data that they need to make an assessed informed judgment about whether immigration is good or bad for the country. Um, I do agree that when it comes to the immigration policy, it's, it is broken in so many different dimensions, but it has to, and that has to be addressed. But the key thing is the immigration problem will not be solved without international collaboration. Britain cannot do it on its own because things like criminal, criminal record screening and tax evasion and things like all those things that can go that can fall within the cracks will only happen when you're able to process people with the collaboration of the country where they've come from and the countries they've come through. So this whole, the, the kinds of things that people talk about as solutions are so, and again, I bring up that word about isolating, isolating of Britain because you cannot fix a problem which originates from international borders without the help of those countries who have actually, where, which, which, without the help of the countries where those people came from and came through. I think you're giving the British state a free pass. You know, one of the most shocking examples was the guy that came over from Serbia. Actually, originally, he was a shepherd. He was a shepherd from Afghanistan. And he came over into the UK he told British authorities he was, not, he was 14 years of age. So without checking, they put him in secondary school, a secondary school down in Bournemouth, next to year nine pupils. He was 19 and he'd already killed two guys in Serbia. And he went on to murder a 21-year-old British guy called Thomas Roberts. The British state is just utterly incompetent when it comes to managing immigration and the security of British people. I think they've had enough. I know, right? Uh, let me tell you now, when, even when you... Uh, I know that story you was referring to, but even when you're just repeating that about that um, guy being put in with the kids, it really uh, enrages me. If I was one of the mothers of the pupils in that class, I would be looking to see if I could take legal action, uh, whether it was the school or the council or whoever it was that had put a grown man in amongst my child, a, a murderer, by the way, in amongst my child. I'd be looking to see whether or not I could create some kind of legal action because surely they've put my child in danger. But the flip side of this is, the second people start having conversations about, right, all these, all these people coming over reckoning that they're kids, when, let's be honest, if your eyes work, a lot of the times you can see that they're a lot older than they say they are, but what the do-gooders will say is, hang on a second, people age differently, you know, these people might look like children, but the second anyone starts suggesting doing medical age checks then, this is when people get upset and say it's a breach of their human rights, whether it's, I don't know, mandating, say, like, dental checks or something like that. So where do you go with this? Actually, in this particular case, in fact, it's just so sad what happened with this case with the 21-year-old lad, Thomas Roberts. I'm, I'm, absolutely, be... I'm absolutely outraged, but in that case, the dentist even said to authorities, 
This guy is not he was 14. The one that flagged it. This guy is 19. Yes. And even then, they didn't do anything. And they and after this guy murdered Thomas Roberts, this guy from Afghanistan, the coroner said that there was no case for an inquest because there had not been systemic failures in this in the in the treatment of this guy. Like it's absolutely outrageous. You are completely right that that is down to incompetence in a system that yeah, is not functioning this isn't properly. About international but then obligations. You, can't, you can't throw that wider to say that, oh, your inability to function autonomously to govern the country, that's to, to deal with an internal broken system, which both of the leaders have said is an issue. So until you start addressing the actual things internally that are wrong, only then will you truly know how much of an influence influence international issues have on Britain. Yeah, but look OK, we need to fix the problem. People say, how do you fix it? It's very clear. Leave the ECHR, reform the Human Rights Act, have an active deterrent. Those three things will immediately help us control our borders and keep British people safe. Now, left and right, they don't want to do that. But the only people who are saying they do want to do that currently are the Reform, my challenge reform, to reform that, Party. What I've said but, before is that even if you do that, people will not stop coming. When you look at the stories that you cover on GB News about the kinds of people who are willing to die risking to come, I keep saying they will not stop no, coming. No, no, that no, no, is no, no, why no, the key sorry, thing sorry. is... That's incorrect. What you have That's to, incorrect. While you are dealing with the issue on this end, mm. you also have to deal with the you, issue of what motivates just, them to take the journey in the first place. That is what, what Keir Starmer said in the beginning, and I don't know how far they're actually going to push this policy is. You have to collaborate with people at the source countries to know what is motivating no, them no, to no, actually no, no, emigrate no, no, in the you, first place. Okay, so if you think that David Lammy, which is what he's done, if you think giving tin pot dictatorships in Africa and the Middle East £100 million of taxpayers' money, which is what he's that done. That's not what I 86 million. OK, but that's, that's one thing that Labour are doing to try and tackle migration upstream rather than control our borders. That ain't going to make a difference. Look, at the end of the day, as the Dutch have said this week, they want a Rwanda-style agreement with Uganda. Italy, Maloney has said she wants offshore processing. Germany has said the same. Ursula von der Leyen. The head of the European Commission has said that she's now looking at return hubs and offshore processing. The only people who are not looking at this, Keir Starmer and the Labour government, what they've done instead, remarkably, they've given 63,000 illegal migrants and asylum seekers the right to stay in the UK permanently. They've just said, you can just stay. Now, what kind of signal is that going to send to people in Syria and Afghanistan, in Iraq? If you enter Britain illegally, you can stay. It's absolutely bonkers. I do agree with that, but I do say, like what Ursula von der Leyen said, offshore processing is fundamental because at a, the point where you start vetting people should be much sooner by the time, much sooner and them getting to a Britain or getting to a France or getting to an Italy. But that will only happen when you start investing in originating countries, knowing that by the time you want to even make the journey, this is the first port of call. And that's where you begin processing. That's where money should be invested. Where David Lammy is investing money, I don't agree with that. Because I don't think they, they have a myopia when it comes to looking at the problem at the source. Because they don't have a full understanding of what it is that motivates migrants to make that no, journey. I, I don't think this government has an understanding of anything to be be honest, it's one of the worst governments in my lifetime. I can't remember a government that has started this badly. And it's, it just seems to be doing the opposite of what you should be doing in order to fix this problem. But I, I mean, I don't mean to be funny, but outward is massively overcomplicating this. You're talking about there has to be this full on strategy to look at the source countries and what's motivating people to. People just need to spend about five minutes on TikTok. And then they'll see exactly what's motiva motivating a lot of these young men to leave their uh, source countries, as we call it. And that is the videos that go around of lots of, it'll be their mates, a lot of young men from their own source countries in four-star hotels, riding around on bikes, working in the black economy uh, for co uh, companies, I won't mention the companies, but I think you know what I mean, uh, takeaway delivery companies, earning cash in hand and so on and so forth, then eventually getting social housing. That's but you what see, is you've just, pointed, you've just pointed out part of where the fractures lie, which do have to be remedied people who exploit for um, free labour, people who do actually take advantage of people who are undocumented that they know are illegal. That are, those are all things that the country is fully aware happens. They know the key industries that exploit it the most, but you're not focusing your remedies in that direction. That is how you begin to fix the problem on this end. But as I said, so there is also an entire yeah, yeah. there's also an entire swathe of immigrants, for instance, who have made the journey to the West and have had a horrible time and want to go back. That is a whole... That's a whole whole body of people yeah, that I, you could use I, to change the conversation on migration because, believe you me, if you have immigration, immigrants at source 
countries talking to their own people who said, I made the journey and I came back because this is how awful it is. You begin to change the tide of flow of people. There was another person who came to the UK recently who I met for coffee, I won't name. He came from uh, United Arab Emirates and he, uh, he just said, what's happening to your country? You don't, you don't put the security of your own people first. This would never happen in places like where, where, he, where he was from. And it's a very interesting observation because we sort of, you know, we fall into the trap of thinking this is normal, having, you know, no, non-existent borders and, and distributing people into our communities. And a lot of other countries think it's completely insane. We should not be allowing people who have entered Britain illegally to simply, you know, filter into our communities. They should be sent to an offshore processing centre immediately and have their claims processed there. The Rwanda programme was not perfect. It had holes in it. It needed to be fixed. But it was making, it, I would argue, it was beginning to make a difference when you saw would-be illegal migrants in Ireland mm. saying the reason they were in Ireland was because they were scared of being sent to an offshore processing centre. That's what we call a deterrent, which is right. why the Dutch and the Germans and the Italians um, and Ursula von der Leyen, among other people, are now saying if Europe is going to fix this issue, it can't just send hundreds of billions of euros to African countries, most of which goes to corrupt leaders. It actually has to start dealing with offshore processing. Paul, one of my viewers, says, Michelle, it feels to me like too many British politicians care more about what the international community think than they care about looking after the British people in here. He says prime ministers in particular seem to worry more about their post premiership millions on their lecture tours. Is that harsh or fair? You get in touch and tell me. Look, lots to talk about after the break.